I'm John Kaiser at the Metals Investor Forum in Vancouver on September 28, 2018. I am talking to Bob Felder, CEO of Renaissance Gold. Bob, welcome to Vancouver. Thanks, John. Glad to be here. Bob, your company is a prospect generator focused on Nevada. And you joined the company with your group a year ago, brought your company's projects into the fold. And a lot of these were covered projects and Nevada 2.0, which is uh, looking for deeper deposits buried under gravel cover or uh, uninteresting looking upper plate rocks or even younger volcanic flows. What is the approach you are using to identify prospective undercover targets in northern Nevada? That's a really good question. Um, there's no real formula for how ABCD we take an approach to exploration. It's a combination of integrating as many data sets as we can get our hands on, both public domain and data sets that we generate, uh, utilizing our own ideas, our own depth of experience in Nevada to come to bring a bunch of features together where we think there's going to be a potential target undercover. So I know that's not a very specific answer, but it really varies project to project. Um, in many examples, we'll use partial extraction geochemistry, which is a way to look through cover. We'll do structural projections using both mapping and geophysics, and uh, anything else we can use to, to come up with an idea. A lot of times, if you're drawing a line between gold occurrence one and gold occurrence two, and you're in between them and you can establish that it's shallow and undercover, it's a good place to be looking. So no real formula, but a lot of just, you know, boots on the ground, geologic, creative geologic thinking. Some people have said that we know where all the trends are in Nevada. There's the Getchell trend that has uh, Twin Creeks and Turquoise Ridge. There's the Carlin trend, which has the uh, uh, Carlin deposits. And then the Cortez trend, which has Pipeline, um, Cortez Hills, and, and, now, and now Gold Rush. And these all seem to have these convenient lines. Is Nevada, is the gold deposition of these Carlin type deposits in Nevada really controlled by a few such uh, linear trends? I'd like to think that there's more of them to be found. Um, the Carlin trend is the most extensively studied and it's been, it's now understood that that Carlin trend is related to the edge of the, the edge of the Proterozoic continent where Proterozoic rifting took place and the edge of the continent in the Paleozoic time. So there's a lot of geologic features that lined up to facilitate gold deposition at that time, especially in the Eocene period, about 38 to 42 million years ago. Um, other trends, we actually explore off the trends because we think that breakthroughs are needed in the industry and you know whether, I mean, trends follow discoveries, right? There's not a trend and then you explore on it. You find a couple of deposits and they tend to line up and you say, okay, there's a trend here. Um, there's still a big debate about what's the Long Canyon trend, right? It's a significant new discovery that was, it's now in, in production by Newmont. Um, there's been people that call it Northwest, people that call it North Northeast, and that's still not really understood because it's in the early stages. We have a project called Ghost Ranch, which we think is on a Northwest trend with Long Canyon, and so um, trends are just what they're called. They're trendy. Some of them can be underpinned with geology, others not as much, and so it's, it's kind of a little bit of uh, sleight of hand magic in some cases as to what defines a trend. In the Carlin trend, it's well defined. In the Cortez, it's becoming more well defined. In other trends, not so much. John Montine and his associates have developed this uh, hypothesis of the uh, rollback mm -hmm. of the Farallon subduction slab, starting way up in the northeast corner mm -hmm. of Nevada, where you found Long Canyon, sort of 42 million years ago, and progressing all the way to 25 million slowly rolling back, unleashing magmatism mm -hmm. that propelled these ponded brines that somehow picked up all these uh, um, metals and uh, forced them up through cracks. And obviously there need to be these deep-seated cracks, mm -hmm. which are the conduits. And perhaps if there are trends, uh, um, you're still going to need these deep-seated structures. Yes. Is there any way one can use a sort of large-scale geophysics to identify such cracks in northern Nevada where they happen to have been such that uh, it didn't outcrop and focus the attention uh, so that these off-trend things that you're looking for, you can have an additional argument is 
There's a deep-seated structure here mm -hmm. that could have allowed these fluids to come up and find the right uh, receptacles to deposit that, themselves. That's a great question, and it's tricky because the deep-seated cracks are the oldest cracks, and because Nevada is tectonically active, those cracks have been overprinted with younger tectonic events, and so they get harder and harder to recognize the more closer to current time that we come. John, in particular, that you mentioned, has done a lot of work that's really going out to old districts and mapping what they call um, inversion structures or reactivated structures to try to determine which ones of these represent some of the old deep-seated structural cracks. It is a, a very important piece of the, of the exploration puzzle. People have tried all the techniques out there. Seismic is actually a technique that's been less used in mineral exploration. I think it's now coming into favor with the larger companies. It's quite expensive. Uh, the small companies, the juniors, aren't really doing seismic. We actually tried to apply seismic on a property by going out and purchasing some seismic data. Um, but seismic sees very, very deep. And if you're, in, like in the case of our ghost ranch, we're looking at less than 1,000 feet. So seismic didn't work because there's way too much noise in the shallow subsurface with the seismic data. But back to your question, it's very important where are the deep cracks, because that's the plumbing. That's where the magmas and the fluids are originating and coming up into the shallow crust. Um, we use what we can today. I mean, geophysics right now, gravity in particular, which maps structure very well, maps the most recent structure. So it, it's tricky. It's a puzzle with many generations of pieces that you have to put together. Now, the Carlin-type deposits, they get all the hype and attention. But in Nevada, everything started more than 100 years ago with the Walker Lane, in particular the Comstock load and epithermal system, 200 million ounces silver, 8 million ounces gold, very high grade, available at surface. The Walker Lane has obviously been prospected to mm -hmm. death and anything that's sticking out of the ground. But your, your team, Renaissance Gold, uh, a, a few years ago, went into the southern part of the Walker Lane and uh, ended up staking up the a project called Silicon, where there isn't anything really obvious on surface, and yet uh, now we see with the, the Bullfrog project and the, the Sterling project, uh, renewed attention in, mm -hmm. the, in the Walker Lane. And you know, we talk about undercover in the, um, uh, in, in, in the Carlin area, northern, northern area, but what sort of undercover opportunities exist in the Walker Lane? What, what would you be looking for? Mm -hmm. uh, obviously, silicon is not just some bleached, uh, uh, barren outcrop uh, of, of rock that it would not have been of interest to prospectors 100 years ago. What is your team doing to generate prospects undercover prospects within the Walker Lane. Well, I don't want to reveal our exploration secrets to you, but Silicon's a good example. The, the mines that are active there, the Sterling Mine in, in the past, the Bullfrog Mine, North Bullfrog and Bullfrog, um, those are, Sterling in particular is down in sediments. It's a deeper occurrence. What we staked on Silicon on open ground in 2015 was a very high level alteration system. There was, there was a steam heated alteration. There was a, actually a historic silica mine there and uh, mercury prospects. And if you look at the vertical zonation of these epithermal systems, there's often mercury at the very top. And as you go further down in the system, and a lot of people will look for the boiling zone, there's a vertical zonation of metals and, and grade. And in, in the case of silicon, there was really no gold on surface. And it was a conceptual target that we were able to get Anglo interested in. Uh, they've drilled some holes on it. Uh, we haven't released the results. They haven't released them to us, but they're coming back with a large program which tells us there's encouragement out there. So we look for more of these kinds of things, these very high-level signatures that may not have gold on surface, but from a conceptual targeting standpoint may be productive at depth. And again, this points out in Nevada, people got to be willing to do something a little bit, a little bit harder than in the last generation. You know, maybe you got to drill 500 meter holes to test these kinds of targets. So obviously at that depth, there has to be good grade to support it. But we are actively looking at those kinds of targets in the Walker Lane as well. They're not so much covered as, not covered by post-mineral alluvium like they are in Northern Nevada, but covered by tertiary volcanic rocks that may be altered but not mineralized. So an awful lot of science. Uh, this is why you have a technical team burning $150,000 a month. Uh, the old idea of a, a prospector, and the company is a bunch of prospectors banging rocks, that's really out the window. You're doing empirical studies mm -hmm. of very subtle data that may not even involve the target minerals to home in on these sorts of targets. Uh, 
That's correct, and especially with the epithermal systems, the model is very well understood, and so you can look for peripheral parts of these systems that may be exposed or subtly exposed on surface and postulate what might be in the subsurface. So we do that. It is, we are prospectors, but it's with, instead of just with a rock pick, it's with a pretty significant and rigorous scientific approach to developing new targets. I think the bread and butter for what we do is developing targets that have, are compelling enough to market to a major like Anglo or Newmont or Barrick and that hasn't really been drilled before. And there are those opportunities, but they're, um, they take a little bit of a different approach than what's been done. In, in 30 years ago, people stood drill rigs up next to outcropping mineralization and made discoveries. Those days are over in Nevada. Well, Bob, this is the reason I've got Renaissance Gold as one of my recommendations. I've been talking to Bob Felder in Vancouver at the Metals Investor Forum.